Hi, Thaddy6 here at Black Fox Knifeworks. This video will be going over our surface grinder and uh, what will we do to set it up here um, at uh, Black Fox before we send it out to you guys. So first off, um, here's the surface grinder jig. It's got a bed, which you put the magnets into, um, a six inch serrated wheel, and uh, we got some V-groove bearings for it to slide along. You can kind of see this one's all kind of loosey-goosey right now. We've got all unadjusted, able to move everything. So the adjustments you're able to make are starting out how flat um, and parallel this bed is to the wheel. So you have two, you have one that goes, uh, rotates around and tilts away from the bed. And you have one that moves this into its um, position where you want it to flat grind a knife. So the first one I like to focus on is getting this so the rail is nice and tight and it's not moving around on you. So tools you'll need to do that are a one and a half uh, millimeter Allen. This will most likely be preset when it comes from us, uh, but I'll show you just in case you want to adjust it in the future. You'll need a nine sixteenths um, wrench and then just a Phillips head screwdriver. All right, so the first adjustment is We'll take off the uh, bed first. So underneath um, the, the carriage plate, there's gonna be some bearing bushings under here. And you'll just, you'll see that there's a little tiny um, spot for an Allen, a 1.5 millimeter Allen. And you'll just go ahead and tighten those down. And that's gonna keep it, keep the blade, or keep the, the carriage plate from moving uh, back and forth on you. You hear a nice little click when you start screwing it in. There'll be four locations. You want to get them all nice and tight. All right, the next thing that I do is I like to pull the carriage plate away from the wheel and we'll start adjusting the uh, V-groove uh, bearings. So I'm gonna take one of these off to show you what's going on underneath the screw. So underneath the screw, you can see that uh, this bearing, you've got a bearing in here with a V-groove on it, and then you have a stud boss uh, thing that the V-groove sits on. And that gets all bolted down. You can kind of see it's it's drilled off center, and that's going to help you tighten the bed uh, to the rails, so you can adjust how tight the rails are um, to the V groove. So on these front two, I set them at max, which means that this side, uh, the side that has the most amount of material, is pointing towards the V groove, which means it's pushing on the V groove as much as possible. Once I get those set, I lock them down. This is where it's good to have a 9 16 wrench that'll go on the nut underneath. Hold the nut in place, tighten your screw down. We'll go ahead and do it on this side too. As you're spinning it, you can kind of see that more of the wheel is exposed on one side than the other side. All right, now that we've got the front one set, we'll go ahead and do the rear ones. So we'll have to slide the bed back in. So right now you can see it's, it's loose, it's wobbling in there. Um, that's not something you wanna have when you're grinding a knife because you want it to be nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and uh, start adjusting these so it's nice and tight against the rail. Again, they're concentric, so as you move them, you're gonna get more interference and it's gonna tighten this up. I like to get them um, the same amount um, of, of material that you can see on, on each wheel, the same amount, as well as the same orientation. 
and that'll be a bit more important once we go into the next uh, phase. So I'm getting this one, I can kind of see that it's, I'll move it along the whole rail. It's not, uh, it's not slipping and I don't see any sort of movement. So we'll get that tightened down right about there just to start. We'll do the same on this end. So now you can see no slipping on the wheel from the rail. It's nice and tight. I do have one dead spot right here. You can kind of see it move um, with this V groove. So I'm going to pull this off a little bit adjust the V groove a bit closer, tighten it back down, and that dead spot is gone. All right, the next step is going to be to tighten, adjust the wheel and the bed to each other. So you wanna have them parallel to do that, we use um, shims in these rear wheels. So underneath that uh, wheel, you can see the hex head and uh, the small uh, metal disc under that, kind of like a washer. So that's what we're using to shim the angle of the bed to the wheel. And these shims we get at uh, McMaster Car. We start off with a three millimeter shim um, if that's too much, we go to the two millimeter or the one millimeter. And uh, we include two of these in, even after we get them factory set here, um, just in case there's further adjustment that's needed, you know, due to shipping, something gets knocked and, and moves or something. Uh, we like to include uh, one of these, but you can get these at master cars if you want to do some additional shimming or, or um, fixing it up, however you want to set it up. Um, you can go ahead and do that. So once you get um, the angles and the, the rail is tight, uh, next up is to check the parallelism between the bed and the wheel. So to do that, you just bring the bed in close, sight down it, and see if there's any sort of angle between the bed and the wheel. And if there is, just go ahead and add another shim back here or reduce the shim to adjust that angle. So what you're doing is you're creating a slight, um, uh, a slight triangle between there, there, up and down. Because this little back wheel is slightly higher. So that'll adjust the angle of the bed. Add more to the back wheel. It's gonna adjust it this way, add less. It's gonna adjust it this way. So the next adjustment um, after you get the bed parallel to the wheel is to set um, how close to set the stops a parallelism along the whole length of the bed. So we start out on the um, this side, we're near the pivot and you get it so, so the wheel is just barely touching barely touching the bed. So you're able to get a good starting point um, that you know that this side is this far from the wheel. Uh, you lock that down um, using this plate. And you wanna make sure that the front edge of this piece and this are fairly close. That'll give you a, a reference of where the angle should line up. Um, so go ahead and, and tighten these down once you get that. And then you're gonna wanna slide it over to the far end and then check to make sure you have the same distance on this side. Once you do, uh, you're gonna set this up against the bed so you have a nice stop and tighten these down. And that way you know that after you do a taper, let's pull this out a little bit. Let's say you're doing a taper and you wanna set it back to parallelism. All you need to do is come up against these stops and on our Gen 2, you can kind of see we have this funky chamfer on the front of it. This is kind of like an old woodworking principle on jigs. So dust and everything can get down there and sit 
So if you're not, um, if you got dust on your rails or something, it'll it'll sit against there and it won't cause you to have uh, contact before you want contact. So those are the main adjustments. We've got uh, the angle to the wheel and we've got the parallelism, par angle and parallelism to the wheel. And then we've got how far the wheel is on each end of the stroke. And um, there's a few other slight adjustments you could do. Um, uh, tiny things, you know, you could come back and make sure that there's no gap between the aluminum uh, piece here and the rail. Because uh, if there's a gap there, if it starts to wave, you might you might get some dead spots or some high spots in the rail, uh, which may cause um, some slight movement that you don't want. Uh, other slight adjustments uh, could be, um, you know, you want to make sure everything's tight. So if you have a loose wheel, you'll see that it can rock back and forth. You want to make sure that is tightened down appropriately so it spins, but then it doesn't move on you. Um, you want to make sure that the plate underneath has been tightened down and it's, and it's um, to this arm. Make sure that there's no debris between the arm and the wheel, because that would also cause a slight angle um, there as well. So there it is, the uh, Black Fox Surface Grinder. Uh, all you need in this one is just the magnets, and then the two... Um, handles, you'll be grinding away.